Hi, um, this is my final field work uh, submission. This is field work number two. Um, and I want to share um, about uh, an experience in the field work uh, that I did um, this past week on my visit to the Calipatria prison. Um, the Calipatria prison is near uh, the border um, of Tijuana uh, in San Diego. Um, it took about uh, three and a half hours to get there from Los Angeles. Um, it is a men's uh, maximum security prison. Um, and the reason for my visit there uh, was uh, my church is part of a larger network um, of churches that have something called the Urban Ministry Institute, which is a seminary uh, level biblical training um, at local churches. It's a curriculum. Um, and it's in 70 jails and prisons um, across um, the country. Um, in, in California. And so uh, my church uh, uh, has that program uh, within our church and we train up our leaders in our church. And so I had an opportunity uh, to go and visit a graduation um, that was taking place in the Calipatria prison, uh, men's uh, maximum security prison. Um, there were four graduates um, from the Urban Ministry Institute um, in this particular uh, graduation um, that was being held. Um, there were about 60 men uh, total um, that were a part of the graduation, but only four graduates um, at this particular time. And uh, the way that uh, these uh, group of men um, uh, form uh, together uh, as a group and how they nurture uh, relationships um, and hold each and hold one another accountable um, is really through this Urban Ministry Institute program and I really uh, was able to see that um, uh, take place uh, during my time um, during this graduation in prison. Um, and there were all cultures that were represented, but predominantly um, it was African Americans. But there were some uh, Latino um, uh, brothers and some uh, a and an Asian or two Asian brothers um, that were there as well. Um, the relationships that are nurtured um, within these group of men that are uh, part of this program, this Urban Ministry Institute that's in the prison, um, uh, those relationships are nurtured um, around leadership development and accountability. Um, and that's something that I saw and something that I heard. Um, directly from the mouths of these men as they were sharing um, their stories with me and their testimonies um, uh, to the, the larger group as a whole during the graduation. Uh, the, when I went in uh, to the room uh, that they held the graduation in, it was the visitor's room. It was the visiting room where uh, families come to visit um, when they're visiting their loved ones who are locked uh, behind bars. And uh, it was natural lighting. There were uh, big windows. Um, the colors in the room were neutral. There were neutral colors. It was a lot of blue, uh, light blue and dark blue uh, colors. Um, the furniture, uh, however, were, was furniture really from the 80s. Um, and they had uh, big doors, uh, windows on the doors, but the doors were really solid, um, as you would imagine, and uh, securely locked. Um, and it was also in the same room where families come in. Um, you could uh, you could conclude um, or make the assumption that this room was the room, the visiting room, because it had a lot of round tables uh, with chairs. And uh, you can see that this is the room where families come and those uh, those uh, inmates who have children come um, to visit uh, their loved ones. Uh, and so. Uh, we had to rearrange the room and move all the tables out of the way and we set the room up to look like um, uh, how you would set up for a church service and so we had uh, rows of chairs uh, with an aisle in the middle on each side um, there were about 40 students um, and that were uh, students of the Urban Ministry Institute program uh, who were uh, locked behind bars, who were the inmates, um, and again, four graduates. Um, there were volunteers from Prison Fellowship, uh, from my church, and also from an organization called World Impact. Um, and when we sat down, the setup of the space, when we sat down, there were in, the inmates had to sit on one side um, of the room, um, and then we, uh, the volunteers, um, and observers sat on the other side of the room. Uh, when we look at uh, describing the different practices uh, that took place, well, first of all, we opened up uh, in worship. Um, and these men were incredible. These men um, led worship. And it was something really uh, formative for me and transformative uh, within me to see um, these men lead worship. 
uh, because these were men who had tattoos um, uh, on their bodies, uh, tattoo tears. Um, they had gang tattoos on their neck um, and on their arms. And to really sit and watch and look at these men lift their arms or lift their hands um, with the, in a sign of worship um, was just something really incredible to see because you have this picture in your mind uh, before I got there of these of a certain uh, um, a visual that I thought I would have a certain expectation, which was really uh, shattered um, when I actually went and experienced uh, this graduation uh, in jail, in prison. Um, there was this uh, idea of hospitality um, that was taking place as these men were trying to make uh, us who were part of that feel comfortable um, by providing that hospitality. Um, and then when the graduates got up to speak, um, one of the practices uh, was the whole idea of truth telling um, and this truth telling was really uh, in, in one sense was really good because it was al almost like it was cathartic uh, for, for some of these uh, men who were graduating to be able to tell the truth about their lives um, and what they had done uh, previously and how God has uh, transformed them um, through uh, the work of uh, Toomey and while they have been uh, locked up uh, behind bars. Um, one uh, person in particular talked about how uh, for him it was transformative um, in that he had never graduated from school. He was locked up since he was 16 years old and graduating with uh, in Toomey um, in the Urban Ministry Institute was the first time he had ever, one, completed anything and two, the first time he ever um, experienced a graduation. And so that was really incredible um, story to hear about that. And the other part of truth telling was when another graduate got up and talked about how he now recognizes and recognizing the guards that were there, the armed guards that were there, um, it was two armed guards, um, and recognizing and acknowledging them and talking to them about how he now understands how they are there for his protection and not to uh, cause him harm. Um, and so that was really good uh, to see and to hear. Um, and you can tell that, the, that this community um, in prison, uh, that they are forming uh, a body. Um, a, a church body um, because they take care of one another, they look after one another, they hold one another accountable and uh, from the mouths of the, uh, of the guards and from the mouths of the warden, um, when you have favor uh, from the warden that says a lot because the warden runs the prison um, and the warden allows these men that are part of this particular uh, uh, class, this Urban Ministry Institute um, um, seminary training class, um, he allows them leadership opportunities and gives them the freedom uh, to do things in prison that a lot of the other prisoners are not allowed to do because there's no trust. And so uh, we we didn't in, we didn't engage in forgiveness in terms of the the practices, um, but again recognizing the role of the guards um, and their family members being present, um, it was just really uh, transformative. And so after the graduation, um, there was fellowship um, for about. 30 to 45 minutes um, and so the whole idea of us being separated from them by the way the chairs were set up we then had an opportunity to mingle um, and to talk to uh, a lot of these men uh, that were part of this uh, graduation celebration um, and we had food um, there was pizza and punch um, and cake and so I had an opportunity to do one-on-one -on -one conversations with uh, some of these men who uh, again have been locked up from the time they were, they were teens and now they're adults uh, some of them who came to me um, uh, with praise reports about God how God is transforming them and transform their lives um, some of them talking about what they want to be able to do uh, when they get out of prison there were some who were going to recently um, because of Proposition 57 um, they're going to be released from prison and talking about how they uh, have a desire to serve in leadership in the local church and so that was really uh, great to, to see uh, and experience and so overall for me uh, this was probably one of the, the most um, uh, transformative um, experiences in terms of community um, and understanding uh, a spiritual formation and community formation and, and, and community practices uh, and so that's my uh, field work for um, field work number two and my last field work uh, for this class thank you